What is a fixed vector or sliding vector or free vector? What are we talking about there? Well, the way you want to look at this is if you have any general vector, like, say, a velocity vector or a force vector, then depending on the specifics of a certain problem you're working with or trying to solve, this force vector or this velocity vector could be fixed, sliding, or free. So it depends on the specifics of the problem. A vector being fixed or sliding or free is associated with constraints within a certain problem. Now, there are some cases where a certain type of vector, based on its definition, automatically constrains it in any circumstance to be fixed, sliding, or free. For example, a position vector. No matter what the circumstance, a position vector is a fixed vector. Same with a displacement vector. And the reason why these are always considered fixed vectors is because their position cannot change without affecting your ability to analyze the system or solve the problem. But you might say, well, no, wait a minute. You could have a position vector tracking an object, like an airplane or something. So the vector is, is it's changing. Well, no, in that case, you're constantly getting different vectors. So you want to think about it from the perspective of if, if you took a snapshot of the system at some moment in time, and so now you, you see just one position vector, one displacement vector. Okay, there are some circumstances that within that snapshot, that there's certain vectors that, that you're allowed to, to move, to either slide along their line of action or move anywhere in the space without affecting your ability to analyze and, and solve the, the problem. But just note, in those cases, you're not changing the vector. It, it still has the same magnitude and direction. But what you can think about is that with a position vector or a displacement vector, you can't do that. The job of a position vector is to locate a point relative to the origin. Its tail has to be fixed at the origin in all cases. It cannot move. And with a displacement vector, its job is to locate one point in space relative to another point, not including the origin. So in that case, it, its, its tail or, or its head cannot move. Okay, so what's an example of a sliding vector? So forces are good examples of sliding vectors. Now, in all circumstances, forces, you don't consider forces sliding vectors. It's only in the special case where you're working with rigid body mechanics, so statics or dynamics. You're doing free body diagrams where you're assuming that the body is a rigid body. In that case, the principle of transmissibility applies for any force, which means that the, the, you can treat the force as a sliding vector. And what sliding vector means is that you can change the position of the force vector, but not its orientation. You can, you can change the position of the force vector by sliding it anywhere you want along its line of action. So, but, but note, in, in all of these cases, fixed, sliding, free, we're not changing the vector. You obviously aren't allowed to change the vector without changing the problem. This is strictly about position and orientation of the same vector. And so if a force can be considered a sliding vector, then you can slide it anywhere along its line of action, and it will not affect your ability to analyze or solve the problem for the correct answers. For example... If we have a wooden crate here, and we're analyzing this from a rigid body mechanics standpoint, so either statically there's, there's, no, there's no net acceleration, or dynamically there is going to be some sort of linear or angular acceleration of the crate. But the crate is not, we're not thinking about the crate deforming at all. It's, it's rigid body mechanics. It's about motions and speeds, accelerations, positions, and the forces that, that cause these motions. Well, if we apply a force here, and then with that force and the, 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 the mass and, and inertia properties of, of the crate, we want to analyze the, the resulting motion, acceleration, spinning, etc. of the crate, then the principle of transmissibility of, of forces 
or the fact that we can treat this force as a sliding vector in this case, says that we could also apply this force over here. Apply the force to the crate, but, but over here. And what that means is that if we solved this system, then the resulting accelerations spinning everything are going to be exactly the same. Now, this, this might confuse you, and, and you're thinking, well, no, if I, if I you know, kind of pull on something from above rather than kind of pushing in that same direction from, from the, the lower end, you know, if, if this crate were on the ground, our intuition tells us that, that, that if, we, if we kind of pull on it here, we're going to get one result versus somehow, you know, pushing on it with that same force magnitude and direction from the bottom, Okay, but in that case, there's all kinds of additional factors at play. First of all, yeah, when you pull on something versus push on it, it tends to deform connections differently. You have more of a chance of like ripping out a connection if you're pulling on it versus pushing on it, it seems. But in those cases, the problem is changing. The system is changing. That's not rigid body mechanics anymore. Okay, but what about a free vector? What's an example of a free vector? Well, staying in rigid body mechanics, couple moments are free vectors. So if this is a, is a couple moment vector, then you can apply this couple moment anywhere on the crate. And from a, a, a pure rigid body mechanics standpoint, just looking at this as a, as a free body diagram, if this is a rigid body, then the effect of this couple moment on the crate is exactly the same no matter where you apply it. So it, it doesn't change the system only if you move it along its line of action, but you can move it anywhere. Of course, without changing the vector, the, the, the vector direction and magnitude doesn't change, but other than that, you can, you can put it anywhere. A couple moments are, are, are the result of equal and opposite forces that, that are parallel to one another but separated by a distance, like shown here or like shown here. You can convert each of these force pairs into a couple moment. And so you've converted each of these pairs into a couple moment. So you can remove the forces and you're left with these two couple moments. And you can apply those couple moments anywhere you want on the beam. And from a rigid body mechanics, static analysis standpoint, it doesn't change the problem. In other words, when you solve for, say, the, the reaction forces in the wall, the moments, the, the shear, and the normal forces in the wall, you're going to get the exact same answer, regardless of if you analyze the system with the forces like shown here, or you convert these force, each of these force pairs to couple moments and put those couple moment vectors wherever you want on the beam, the resulting analysis of, of, the, of the statics problem is going to be the same. You're going to get the same reaction forces here. And so that's it. That's the idea of what a fixed sliding and free vector mean. Based on, on the context of a specific problem, certain vectors you're allowed to move without changing your ability to analyze or, or solve the problem. And, and so note, it, this does not mean that we, we talked about how when we were learning what vectors were, that in generally a vector you can put wherever you want. It's not fixed anywhere. Just like a temperature scalar. You know, if we have some temperature, well, in general, it's not fixed. We can we can bring it into a temperature into a system and put it wherever we want. Okay, th this is not what free vector is referring to. We can take this angular velocity and, to, and assign it to, you know, like a like a spinning shaft. No, that's not what free vector is referring to. It, it, it's saying that a vector is a free vector if if you bring that vector into some space and, and assign it to something, like a vehicle or, or whatever, so now it's assigned and you have your system defined, well then after that, is it the case that you can slide or move that vector where, wherever you want without changing the, your ability to analyze or, or solve for the correct parameters within, it, within that system? then you call it sliding or free.